All right, so um, my name is Rafa, and uh, I wanted to um, <laughs> ask you some questions, maybe. Uh, this, I won't be as great, for now, I won't be as creative as, as the rest of the guys, unfortunately. Um, but for my, um, as you can see, we're going to t talk some um, about uh, different things than before. Uh, because everyone talks about the Elm in the browser and JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript. <laughs> I, I hate JavaScript, so I want to talk about it. I, and, um, um, because of uh, it's, it, it has come to a time that I had to choose a topic for my master thesis. Uh, so it's going to look something like that. So uh, it's going to be a de development of a compilation system for M, but not a compilation system for JavaScript, but a, let's say something like a proper compilation system for <laughs> for, for native for, for native uh, runtime, let's say. Um, so my real work doesn't it doesn't even start yet. Um, I, I just let's say chose this topic, uh, but even want me to uh, talk something about this, tell, tell you uh, what are my thoughts, and I wanted to um, collect some feedback from you, let's say, um, and propose some, uh, propose something for start, let's say. So, um, we have some, in today's world, we have some candidates for building our pro programs for. Uh, they are, oh, those are some major ma major platforms, let's say, major systems uh, which you can, you can compile your programs to. Um, and um, let's say that um, the only thing that, <laughs> that we will focus uh, now is the CLR, B CLR because uh, I don't know anything about LVVM. I don't think I would manage to... Eh? Is that yeah. yeah. Uh, what? You don't know exactly. I don't know uh, anything <laughs> about it. <laughs> uh, it. It should be L L V M. Yeah, L L V M. Sorry, right. I, I always mixed it. Uh, so <laughs> we're not going to talk about this because it's um, maybe we we could uh, I don't know uh, transform M to C plus plus and to L V M or something like that. But I'm not a C plus plus engineer. For me, uh, this te technology is hard. <laughs> it's uh, it's low level, and I'm not a low level guy for now. Uh, <laughs> and unfortunately, for now, I'm going to talk. To, uh, I'm going to um, uh, build this from scratch, from what I can do. Let's say with what I can do, and I can't do LVVM for now. Maybe it's a better target. It, maybe it's faster. <laughs> but it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have any garbage collection. It doesn't have any, let's say, uh, uh, concurrency from this, from from the beginning, and so on, so on. So uh, you would have to make everything yourself, and um, it's not it's not a thing for one one person. I think it's not a thing for two persons, <laughs> uh, and so on. Uh, so not LVM, uh, JVM. Uh, no, because again, I don't know it. And f uh, from uh, what I collected, it doesn't have the, um, those nice, nice things that CLR, CLR will get, give me. Uh, there's many of them. We are going to uh, talk about it in a, in a minute. So um, for now, I'm focusing on CLR we are, uh, as a target for Elm. Um, we, uh, we want to talk about specific language. We, uh, I think it, we, I'm not going to do it f uh, directly to, to the intermediate, intermediate language of CLR, namely uh, EL, uh, IL, um, or M MIL, or CLIL, or any, anything like that. Probably it, it's still going to be a high level language, like F sharp or C sharp. Uh, so, with that in mind, yeah, what, why, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, Beamer, Beamer is, <laughs> you know, it is, it's normal presentation, it should just appear <laughs> on the list uh, with the Beamer, but uh, whatever, it, it's, it's another slide, unfortunately. So, 
With CLR, we have um, garbage collection from the spot, and it's a good thing. It's, it's uh, the same as with JavaScript for now, so we don't have to uh, maintain garbage collection. Uh, we don't have to worry about tail call optimizations because it's already there. Mm, um, it has some good set of compilation transits, so uh, like I said, uh, it's going probably going to be C sharp or F sharp. Um, and uh, maybe it's not obvious uh, at start, but with um, actually at the language level, both C sharp and F sharp have some real, real nice. Uh, tools for concurrency out of the box, and it's. Uh, I know it's working. I, I, I work with them every day, and I love them. Uh, I'm going to touch on this later. More, uh, yeah, it's the, the, the most <laughs> important thing <laughs> that I can actually get, get something done. And see, uh, maybe I could start, so maybe um, we could start some project. To, uh, in, with LVVM and something like that, but uh, I think I would wouldn't finish it. So why why bother? <laughs> that's 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 the real thing. So um, let's think uh, for for a second. Um, what's the problem? With, what 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 could cause problems uh, in transition uh, of Elm to some another platform than web browser? You get many many uh, things in browser out of the box. And the one, the one that is most, most important is um, the user interface system, the layouting system. Layouting systems, I think, is it, it's a very hot topic. Uh, you can mm, everyone knows that f for from CSS and from HTML. Uh, I don't think anyone in the world is happy with with those layouting systems. So. Mm, um, Elm is giving uh, a layer of abstraction for uh, for uh, GUIs uh, from the spot, mm, and probably we, sh we should provide that as well in in the compilation system. That is hard because there's no language, uh, and I think there's there's reason for that. There's no language that provides um, some graphical using interfaces from the spot. So there's many options. There's, there's frameworks, let's say. Uh, and there's the option of creating uh, your uh, your own layouting and UI system, but that's another hard thing, very hard thing. That I think it's, it's uh, as hard as as it, uh, as the thing of translating Elm to uh, translating one language to another. So for now, I'm not focus focused on uh, on that. Mm, I hope I will be able to use uh, an existing uh, layouting system, a new UI system. Um, so what, uh, there's one more thing. What about F, 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 I? Mm, for now, mm, I'm not concerned about it. I think it will, uh, with the type of notations and, uh, and the, the current syntax for it, uh, the current um, types safe, the type safety, because the F, F, I is type safe for now, mm, there wouldn't be a problem to translate it to, uh, to Let's say F sharp or something like that. So it's uh, it's one thing that could pro cause problems, but for now I think it's going to be okay. Mm, okay. Uh, so we're going to mm, look at some. Uh, there's there's uh, there's the thing of portability. The portability. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we want to be portable as as a browser. That's actually not not possible. I think. There's no uh, optimal solution for now, um, but there, there's uh, there is a te technology that uh, is based on CLR and uh, it's it's uh, already quite good at uh, maintaining portability between um, and that is important between normal uh, Windows applications between Windows Mono, let's say, and uh, I mean Linux here, so Mono, and the mono mobile platforms, because um, both Evan and me are very interested in uh, using uh, using them in uh, mobile uh, devices. You know, it's important. And, uh, I think uh, this this one uh, mm, this one topic, the, the mobile devices, are hard even with the browser, because um, no, they could be slow. I think 
they could be not, f they, they aren't like Chrome, like, like the state of the art. The mobile, I think the mobile browsers are not yet there, let's say. So it could be hard. Um, so we want to, um, uh, we want to get native, native performance on mobile devices too. Uh, because mobile devices is where the market is right now. So it's very important for, uh, for a normal um, developer. Uh, so, uh, back to the technology that, that is uh, um, very promising. Uh, there's a thing called Xamarin, uh, a company called Xamarin. Um, they are, I think they are actually maintaining a whole, uh, whole mono framework. No, I, I, I don't want to lie to you. Um, but I think it's true that they are, they are uh, the company behind the mono. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, they managed to um, to uh, create frameworks for uh, also create frameworks for, uh, based on Mono and CLR for mobile devices, most uh, important mobile devices. So the the strat strategy uh, is that they give the users uh, an API uh, for iOS and Android. They um, they tell tell uh, their customers that okay, you've got. The codes for uh, code in in C sharp, let's say, um, for for uh, Windows, uh, you, <coughs> you can use your modules, your uh, business logic, and something like that, uh, and share it between platforms. But uh, and I think it's a very uh, very smart move. You still have to um, create the UI layer uh, in the technology of the specific platform. And it works. Uh, I think that, that they, it's a good smart move because uh, there's no way to uh, actually create um, create one, let's say, white technology or one technology on one one uh, language or one no, I don't know framework that will capture all uh, all the UI frameworks of today mo today's mobile devices. Uh, you know, the Android uh, has some some XML. Uh, the iOS has, has, I think there's, there's also some XML there, or some, some different language, some Android activities, or something like that, uh, different, different uh, APIs, uh, APIs for, um, for using, uh, for, uh, APIs for uh, input, and something like that. So um, they, they uh, leave that, that layer alone, they leave the uh, UI layer alone, mainly, uh, but you can still um, use the business logic, the, the model logic, let's say, uh, and share it bet between uh, between uh, the devices, the, the platforms. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, for Elm, it's actually a good thing and bad, bad thing because I don't know yet what we are going to do with the UI. It's the most important <laughs> thing now. Um, maybe uh, there's, there will be some, um, I hope to create some, uh, also, also uh, make some layers, like model layer and le uh, logic layer and UI layer uh, in which um, we will um, abstract the, all the, uh, the things that, that, that Elm uh, has for uh, UI and translate it off to the specific, specific platform UI. That could, I think, I believe that, that it could be possible. Or the most portable <laughs> way, we still make our own um, UI system. That's the hard way, but it's, it's a prob probably the most um, portable way. Um, okay, and then there's one, oh, one more thing about Xamarin that bothers me, mm, but um, <laughs> Laszlo said, said uh, um, a good thing about, about this, that is actually a good thing, that Xamarin uh, doesn't, um, it's, it's, it's not, um, let's say, free, as in free beer. <laughs> it's licensed now, and it's, it's license uh, is, is um, quite costly, it costs quite much. Uh, if you want to uh, actually build a real application. You, uh, you can get some fun with it. You can um, create uh, some, some uh, C-sharp base or F-sharp base application in it. Uh, but its runtime is, is constrained by size. You can only create, uh, I don't know, uh, 20, what, 
what, what would be for the whole package, one megabyte or, or the runtime is 20 kilobytes, something like that. R it's really small runtime. Uh, and I think the whole runtime of, of, the, of the Elm, let's say, some like, something like Elm uh, engine, in, uh, engine in there, uh, would be um, bigger already. So it's, it's a no-no <laughs> there. Mm, but as, as Lazo said, we, it's actually mm, a good thing for business because you can eventually tell, you, eventually tell your customers uh, that here's the Elm, uh, this, here's the browser version of Elm, you got it, you can make software in it, and eventually if you want to um, get the native performance for your mobile applications and, between the pla and still be portable between the platforms, still have uh, one code base or one uh, code base that needs some tweaking, let's say, mm, you still have to pay. <laughs> it's, it's a business, uh, so uh, we, we give you the service. Um, uh, unfortunately, we also need some, <laughs> we also need to pay Xamarin, let's say, <laughs> and you have to pay us and the Xamarin for the native performance of your application. Uh, so it, it, I, I'm not too too concerned about it, but it's all also the license. Um, it could be a problem, but we'll see. Um, okay, uh, but oh yeah, uh, um, I think for now, really uh, we're looking at the hacks. Uh, hacks, uh, maybe someone of you know. You look at Unity, hacks, uh, and all that. Um, I still think that um, Xamarin is, is uh, actually the optimal solution for us. Uh, you know, Hux is, uh, you can use uh, something like, I think it's only ActionScript or something like that. It's compiled to JavaScript, ActionScript, yeah. PHP, C++. And, uh, aha, and the other, but the language is like, like ActionScript or JavaScript style, uh, ECMAS, ECMAScript style. It's like Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so uh, no, yo, uh, it, we would have to mm. learn, learn or incorporate another technology which, which uh, I and uh, I propose you don doesn't know. Anyone, any, anyone of us doesn't know Hacks. Uh, Hacks uh, also, uh, Hacks, Hacks uh, looks promising, uh, but I can't use it right now. Uh, and I thought that when I um, so there's some examples, uh, read, read some, some examples, some documentation. It looks like it's, a, mm, maybe it's, it's a good thing. Uh, it looks like JavaScript, <laughs> uh, a little. So I don't want to go there, let's say. Maybe, maybe not. I still believe that the Xamarin could be the way to go. So I will stick with that for now. Uh, okay, so. Mm, one, one proposition for the, UI, uh, for the UI layer would be to, uh, at least for now, because <laughs> I, I have to start small, let's say. Um, I, I want, want to st stay, uh, start small and don't think about everything right away. So I don't want to think about um, um, already supporting the iOS and Android, let's say, but I know Windows Phone. I know Windows uh, Store applications. I work, work uh, with those technologies uh, every day. I can start for, that, for there, yeah, I can make uh, this framework uh, as much mo modular as, as possible, let's say, and we, we, uh, we're going to get from there somehow. So, um, um, so uh, it, 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 ha it, uh, it happens that, that uh, XAMPP-based frameworks and ZAM um, could provide very well, uh, could provide a, a way to, to uh, do, uh, do the UI layer almost with no hassle at all, I think. It's, um, if someone doesn't know, and uh, it's, it's a whole um, UI framework for all, the, all those uh, these uh, frameworks. Uh, WPF is, is for desktop, Windows desktop ap applications. Silverlight was a plugin like, uh, plug like uh, Flash. Uh, Windows Phone and Windows Store, is, you know, the Windows Store applications are those that uh, work in Windows 8. Mm. So it, it's, uh, you know, if I could, um, there's easy, I think there's easy way to uh, find uh, mm, common, common ground with, with Zone, with all, the, all of these frameworks. So if I could manage to, uh, to translate Elm 
to those technologies, that would be already great. And I think, uh, I believe, I, I, I'm able, with, with my knowledge, I am able to, uh, to do that. Uh, especially that this XAML is actually reactive programming for GUIs. <laughs> it turns out that uh, the most uh, important thing in, in creating, um, creating uh, UIs in XAML is the binding mechanism. You know, um, when you say binding username to some text, text in text box, that's a control, let's say. That's a property in a control. That's a binding. That's a property from, from our model. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, um, ZAM, ZAM uh, is embracing MVVM, model view view model uh, pattern. It's almost the same as MVC, uh, just in a way that, um, let's say that you have some model, you have some view, and view only view knows about model, model knows, uh, doesn't know anything at all. <laughs> uh, model knows uh, only about business logic. Uh, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to um, reason about, uh, and I, I like it very much. Um, so, uh, what you are doing right here is binding username name with, uh, uh, from the model. It's a property from, from our model. Um, it's easy as that, and when you do something like this, uh, and if something in um, our model, cl model class, let's say, we have some uh, view model class, and if we change the property username, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to, uh, this change is going to appear in the UI seamlessly. You don't have to do anything with it. Um, and this, it's a text box. Uh, text box which can uh, also receive some input from user. And if we do something like that, mod 2A, we, we're actually getting, um, we're actually getting uh, two-way binding. So uh, the changes uh, are, uh, are translated to the, uh, uh, propagated to the model. So, like I said, it's actually some kind of reactive programming. Um, the model receives information from the view, the view receives information from the model, uh, and it's happening seamlessly without, without any uh, additional work from the developer, let's say. Uh, I really like the, this system, uh, and I, I, be, I believe that it, um, when we um, find a way to decompose Elm programs, uh, so we can so we can uh, um, layer layer uh, pick pick the UI layer and then pick the model layer, uh, we can very easily translate uh, translate it something like, like something to that. Mm, eventually, we, uh, without even without the ZAM, let's say, the whole the, the ZAML-based frameworks, let's say, uh, can mm, uh, the UI can be generated from code. It doesn't have to be the XML. It's very important because uh, eventually, mm, maybe uh, uh, there will be a need to to mm, only generate the UI on runtime, without the declaration. Uh, in XML, and it's also possible. If I need this, uh, I can do this. Uh, maybe, um, maybe the, the, there's no way to uh, to decompose uh, UI and uh, model from Elm. So then uh, I will have the option to to create um, the UI on uh, UI on runtime with this framework. So um, and there's one, two actually, two things. Yeah. There's actually two things additional which will help me um, to develop the system. Uh, maybe someone of you already had. Um, there's something like uh, reactive extensions in .NET. In .NET. It's uh, open source uh, recently, so it's a very good thing. Um, and as, as, uh, as it's typed here, um, it's a set of types representing our signals data streams. So, it's a set of types representing signals, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, it's another mean, um, uh, okay, yeah, uh, and uh, additional link will query uh, operators for those signals. Um, and types to parameter concurrency is schedulers. I, I will touch this uh, in a while, uh, later. Um, so, um, what is it, it is? It's actually another <laughs> approach to reactive programming in .NET. Uh, I've used it. I love it very much. I think for that some of the operators 
that are here should uh, become ELM operators, really. Maybe we will see some of them in a second. So, um, it's something like that. We've got some observables, that's the uh, objects that represent those streams. Uh, we've got Linku, everyone knows what Linku is or not? Yeah, uh, or should I explain uh, Linku? Yeah, like three minutes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, almost, it's almost there, so it's okay. Mm, Linko is, is, is it's, it's a, um, oh, it's a, it's methods, uh, extension methods in C Sharp, that, C Sharp and every .NET language, actually, uh, that would let you um, write um, declarative queries for data. Uh, and in other words, functional programming in .NET. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, I, uh, you know, um, we, um, developing the, let's say, Windows Phone applications, I almost do, do, don't, I, I don't use uh, loops at all. Sometimes there is a need to some loop, but, but it's uh, all, almost all, it's a uh, for each, eventually. I don't use indexed f f <laughs> loops in my programs. It's everything th thanks actually to, to Linku. Mm, li Linku, Linku. Um, so, mm, the guys from er er Eric's reactive extensions added s s some additional um, Linku uh, extensions, um, which, uh, which work on observables. observables. Uh, that will, I think, look very familiar to, to you. Uh, I think it was something like that. Let's say, uh, we, we have to get some events. Oh, <laughs> wrong, wrong button, sorry. Uh, we have to make, uh, make uh, some observables from events. Uh, anyone is uh, able to read the code? So, um, don't look at this point, it's, uh, it's just uh, a way to convert uh, uh, events, from, uh, events from the framework to observables. Actually, we're doing, we're creating here a, a signals or streams of mouse moving events, up events and down events. Click and, and uh, mouse up. So, next what, what we are going to do. Uh, we are saying that mouse locations is mouse move, select something, 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 they get position, okay. So we are just mapping, <laughs> actually. Uh, select is map in Linku. Uh, distinct or until changed. Ch uh, so it means that it, um, it will, um, I don't remember if Elm um, has, uh, has the, this, drop what? Drop yeah, drop repeats, ex exactly, that's the one I, I thought. So distinct to change is drop repeats. Uh, okay, we will, s <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, um, we have this mouse locations. And so what are we going to do with these mouse locations? We're going to sample them only on down events. Or uh, mouse check locations, skip until, or, so uh, skip all those, uh, skip this signal until the down events appears, and take it until up events uh, uh, get, uh, up events uh, come, uh, any up event comes here. And uh, you have to actually repeat this because uh, uh, take until would, add, would, would end this stream when the up events uh, ended. So we want to repeat this uh, forever, let's say. This, this the mouse location is skimp until, take until, and repeat. So it's actually <laughs> like, a, a, almost like writing a, a, a signal declaration, let's say. And I believe I'm, I, I will be able to uh, translate Elm uh, almost uh, completely to those queries. That will be awesome, I think. Uh, and I'm going to uh, go for it. Mm, uh, there is, uh, mm, uh, reactive extensions are open source, so I, I think we will be um, able to use it in Mono. There was some projects uh, porting mon uh, re reactive extension RX to, uh, to Mono. Um, they worked like, oof, it, it, I think it was okay, somebody, somebody was using them, but now that they, they are open sourced, we can do everything about them. Uh, I, I think I managed to, to use it uh, in Mono and Zamarin too, I think. So it's all starting to, you know, uh, gluing together up to um, uh, to uh, translating Elm to actual actual uh, reactive code in .NET. <laughs> so um, I'm very um, I'm very enthusiastic about this. Mm, okay, was the 
Uh, was there something? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, and for um, uh, one more thing, one more last thing about c concurrency. Um, with, with uh, still with reactive extensions and with TPL. Uh, reactive extensions uh, are working, working um, with schedulers. Schedule, uh, the, the, the framework provides some schedulers. The, those schedulers are really, I think that they are state of the art as, as the team behind the reactive extensions are most of the, you know, Brainiac guys. <laughs> um, um, so you don't have to think, uh, uh, writing, writing this, uh, this reactive code, you don't have to think about schedulers at all. So you don't have uh, manually to schedule uh, the events. It's already there in the R R R Rx. Maybe uh, w there would be some problems on mono, uh, with, uh, actually with schedulers, because it's uh, the most, um, I think, uh, the most uh, hard thing to, to translate to mono and, and POSIX traits or something like that. That could be tricky. But on .NET we have this al already on every major platform. I mean, uh, you can use it in, in Windows Phone and, uh, on, and WP, uh, WPF and, and con console application everywhere. So um, I don't have any pro uh, I, I won't have any problems with, with uh, the race conditions and something like that because the schedulers, the proper schedulers for .NET are already, are already there. And additionally, uh, with the new async and await key keywords uh, in, uh, in .NET, uh, we actually um, escape the callback hell forever. Uh, maybe I will write some uh, fast, fast example. So you uh, now in uh, in .NET you can uh, do something like that. Do something. <laughs> mm. And now let's say uh, await. Uh, at first, do something. Do that. Ask. Mm. With those key keywords, uh, the, um, I won't. I don't want to go into details here because they are not important. Oh, in case it's very low. Mm. But you can do any code you want here. Mm. Do something. Do something. Do something. Have some closure. Let's say. <coughs> Yeah, and actually, if uh, we don't use uh, almost, uh, we almost forgot about about uh, callbacks now. Callbacks now, because this await keyword uh, is uh, giving the control to uh, to that async. It's ret returning with the eventual, uh, with some eventual uh, results, and we can continue. Uh, we can continue our method later. And there's and no drawbacks, almost no drawbacks to that. It's like a, it's like a JavaScript, come, uh, JavaScript <laughs> callback hell victim come true. Because mm, you don't have to uh, use callbacks in your async patterns at all. So, uh, and actually it's, uh, you can make this uh, run on, uh, one, uh, on one thread or Many different threads. There's also uh, uh, there's also meaning for that in the framework, and it's done for you uh, almost all automatically. Uh, it depends if you are doing something on the on the UI thread thread or not. The schedulers, uh, different schedulers behind the TPL uh, behind the, this async await, are um, maintaining uh, everything for you. So it's another mean um, to to uh, handle the the the. Um, Asynchronous as, and uh, concurrent things uh, from Elm by those keywords eventually. Uh, yeah, so it's it's the things that I think will mm, uh, just mm, fit so so nicely. Everything of this fits ni so nicely to to the reactive paradigms that, that I think uh, I have, I just have to use them <laughs> in in this project. I, and I think I, uh, mm, oh, they are they are mm, going to provide me a way to translate uh, Elm programs nicely to uh, every major nat native platform, let's say. Okay, and I think it's, it's, it's uh, everything I wanted to, uh, to tell you, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Any questions? I, uh, okay, uh, or maybe yeah, I will. 
ask you a question. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I, I'd like to say, darn you, BP2. Yo, what? What? I've, I've also wanted to make uh, a uh -huh. YouTube. Okay, okay. Well, and I started researching and was like, ah, I can't find something that has uh -huh. green threads and uh -huh. some nice layouts. It looks like you have it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. It's, it's Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you but could, you <coughs> could easily run into a very difficult bug to fix if it's slightly different from Perhaps, but it's seeing uh, someone run into something with some currency without reacting <coughs> is pretty hard. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, just saying that you can't just go and say these look similar, so it must have the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Like, Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Okay, and, um, and for the record, uh, that's the same thing with uh, F sharp, actually. Uh, they got, it's, it came with, from F sharp, and uh, I don't, I, I'm not saying here that I will use C sharp. Maybe I will use F sharp because it's a fun function language and uh, it would pro probably fit, fit better. Uh, but it, uh, we got this async await in C sharp actually from, from, uh, from F sharp first. They got the async workflows, and it's basically the same thing. So, so it's not actually the, the C sharp, but the CLR, the, the things that you can do in CLR and the, the, the things that are done in CLR uh, based technologies. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh,